So, Pogo is still a 3-3. Three, three. Hello, good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're all having a magical day. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. We will be playing 100 card historic brawl today, which does not leave the queue until September, right? Just before the release of Innistrad, we will lose historic brawl. A few people thought it was leaving this week with the updates. Don't worry, you can keep playing it for another month or so, which is a lot of fun. We'll be playing with Soren Vengeful Bloodlord today within a vampire tribal deck. Just having fun. And this bad boy is more competitive than you would think. So we're going to break down the deck list, talk about the strategies, synergies, highlight some of the bangers within the deck. Obviously not going through each individual card because there are so many. Showcasing all of those strategies and synergies within today's gameplay footage. And of course, wrapping up with our final thoughts and deck review. All right. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out that link tree, potentially become a Patreon, and let's go. Alrighty, 100 card historic brawl, um, vampire edition. Has an average mana value of 3.2 with 32 non-creatures and 33 creatures, so a really nice split and uh, 34 land, which <laughs> that's as crazy as I've ever had deck numbers come out. 32, 33, 34. Maybe there's some magic within that. Our Brawl Commander, or um, uh, just Commander in general, I should say, is Sorn Vengeful Bloodlord for four. Four loyalty, a static ability, giving all of your creatures and Planeswalkers a lifelink, as long as it's our turn. This is incredible. Plus two, dealing one damage to target player or Planeswalker. Minus X, returning target creature card with mana value X from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature is now a vampire in addition to its other types. Um, so this is great because we can deal damage, right? That chip damage to our opponent, to uh, those planeswalkers while gaining life. And we can also bring the vampires that have died already in the game back into the battlefield, which is cool. Many of them will have enter the battlefield or leave the battlefield effects, uh, which we can double down on, which is really nice as well. So there's a ton of vampires in the deck right um let's talk about some of my favorite vampires vona butcher of magan for five it's a four four with vigilance and lifelink you can tap it to pay seven life destroying non-land permanent activating it on our turn because it has vigilance we can attack gain four life tap it pay seven which is really only like losing three to destroy anything very 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 cool um i absolutely love it we also have our Draineth Bloodchief. Whenever it attacks, defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card from our graveyard, returning it to the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it, and it will be a vampire in addition to its other types, which is really cool, right? So um, bringing those creatures back from the grave, which is nice. Champion of Dusk, when it enters the battlefield, draw X cards where X is equal to the number of vampires we control and lose X life. Uh, you know, that's pretty cool as well. The Reginant, whenever it attacks, Gain plus one, plus one counters equal to the amount of damage it did. It's a 4-4. Four, four. It goes to 8-8. Eight, eight. Ward, discard a card. So that's pretty cool. You know, not the greatest uh, creature in the library, but I, I really do like it. And of course, we have the Dusk Rose here. Um, you know, Vito's old lady, uh, Eldena. <laughs> a 1-1 one, one with lifelink. Whenever another creature dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And then when she dies, create X-1-1 one, one white uh, vampires with lifelink, where X is equal to her power which is pretty cool. And um, we do have Vito in here as well within the three drops. Whenever you gain life, opponent loses that much life, which is pretty crazy because we have so much lifelink in the deck. Um, you know, that brings us to stuff like the Exquisite Blood. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. And if you have Vito, they're gonna lose that much life again, which is absolutely insane. We also have, you know, some top end cards here like Overwhelming Splendor, Creatures our opponent control have base power and toughness of 1-1. One, one. They can't activate abilities that aren't mana or loyalty abilities. Uh, this is pretty cool, and we're kind of, uh, you know, synergizing it with something like eth uh, Ethereal Absolution. Our creatures get plus one, plus one. Their creatures get minus one, minus one, which will just, you know, keep the field empty, which is really cool when, you know, comboed with the Splendor. You know, we have Cruel Reality as a curse as well. They have to sacrifice a creature or lose five life on the start of their upkeep, which is nice. Um, <laughs> you know, what else is really uh, integral to the deck? Soren is in here. Uh, Soren can put a big vampire uh, into play immediately, which is pretty cool. Something like the Haunt of Hightower. 
uh, is just going to ruin your opponent's life. We have Haunting Voyage, which, you know, when foretold, can bring all of our vampires back into the field, which is absolutely insane. We have the Tutor, both Idyllic and Grim. You know, you can get the Curses, uh, the Absolution. You can get Helioid. Uh, you know, those lifelink plus one, plus one counters is pretty crazy as well. Um, you know, we have lots of removal in the deck. Doomblade, Vanishing Verse, D-Spark, uh, stuff like this, right? More vampires, a ton of, uh, you know, like Blood Artists is really good. Whenever uh, another creature dies, target player loses one life, we gain one life. You know, that's going to combo with the whole uh, life gain situation. Graveyard Recursion, we already talked about. Null Priest is here. <laughs> it's all here, you guys. Every Everything you're going to want, you know, a little bit of Thought Seize, Knight of the Ebon Legion, um, you know, Legion's Landing. Everything that you could possibly want. Crippling Fear, nice. You select Vampires, wipe the field there. Um, you know, some more removal, more life gain, life loss. Twilight Prophet's really good too. So um, it's just a, a whole bunch of fun. Things like the Nighthawk Scavenger, um, the Undying uh, Partisan. So much stuff going on here. We have a Castle Lockthwain. We have a Castle Ardenvale. We have a Great Hall of Starnheim. And of course, we do have the Cabal Stronghold as well as the Snarl um, and Fable Passage, right? So Command Towers there, Arcane Signets there, you know, the general brawl staple marks. Uh, this and that so that's the deck it's uh, a long list if you want to go through it individually that's fine just touching on you know the cards that grab my attention stuff like the sanctum sinker whenever a vampire you control attacks each opponent loses one life and you gain one life right so you know everything really does synergize nicely together uh thanks for watching the deck tech portion of this video it's kind of weird for me i like to go really in depth and flush the whole deck out but we can't possibly do it with these 100 card decks without me going insane dramatic finale creatures get buffed up whenever they die they make a token that's crazy and then you bring those creatures back from the grave you know what it is right so there's a lot of cool things within this deck that we didn't even get to talk about that you might see within today's gameplay footage enjoy make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and check out that link tree link maybe potentially become a patreon and join the discord community for sure enjoy and we'll be back after the gameplay footage to wrap up with our final thoughts our opponent's playing first, land looks pretty good, and honestly, I know there's no ramp here, but uh, hmm, we're going to allow it, and hopefully we don't get punished for it. Swamp first, then the chapel, into our gifted Aetherborn, which I think is a pretty decent turn too. I mean, that quick 1-1's one, not bad either. And then if we're losing life, you know, that's fine. I don't think we'll be paying life with any of the current cards in our hand, but it is an option for later. Voyage is great. Let's see if we survive long enough. I mean, it's Yarok, so these ETBs will be doubling. Uh, you know, if they get a, a Thassa to be bouncing the ETBs, it's, it's going to be a problem. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be the first one to admit that. What vampire card do we want from our library? We have so many of them. Probably just a nice four drop. I'm tempted to go straight to Vona. I think we should just take Vona. Dusk is really good. There's so many great options. I love Vona. She's my typical girl. Vona's my girl. I gotta do it. One of my favorite vampire cards for so long. And there will be no attack here. The Butcher of Magan. You can uh, have it in play with Vigilance and Lifelink. It's a 4-4. We can tap it after it attacks because it has Vigilance. To pay 7 life, destroy target uh, non-line permanent. Which is just so good. And at uh, on our turn. That's so, you know. It can be instant speed, but basically uh, it does not matter. So land out. That takes us to 4. I do like the flyer. And then the plus one, plus one counter. Oh, probably doesn't matter where it goes because they have that removal. So I'm going to put it on the Forerunner. No attacks. Oh, this goes away at the, uh, at the end of turn. Okay, sorry. So it doesn't matter, right? Uh, good to know. It'll probably just go on itself since it has flying. Um, they are at four. Cast down, slays the Necromancer. 
pretty good. Maybe we should have went Aetherborn, pushed the Voyage over. Which is, I guess, what we'll do here. It's either that or everybody gets life gain. Yeah. I mean, it's not attacking anyways. Uh, it's just chilling. Let's foretell this over. No attacks? That Necromancer's... It's in our way. We're sitting on four mana. Looking for that fifth. Um, a few really expensive cards in hand as well, right? Um, you know, seven and eight mana available to us with only four in play. Let's get rid of the um, list of cards here. The MTG Arena Assistant, which was on our left-hand side. We don't necessarily need that. Um, that's going to give them one more land. They don't use it. We do pull another planes. Great news. I think I'm going to just take out the, uh, the Necromancer. Push up the Forerunner. And just, we can attack with the Death Touch this turn, probably. Just hit, uh, Nissa if they want to trade the Necro, that's fine. I'm okay with that because remember Soren can bring back that Necro uh, later on. It does go into exile even though it uh, is traded with it. I was hoping that because they went at the same time it wouldn't send it to exile, but it does. So Soren will not be grabbing that. But it's still worth the trade in my opinion. My home. They have five available mana. Mind Flare takes Vona. I'm going to freak out. <laughs> oh, I'm going to freak out. Wow, that's really, really bad. We should ping Nissa, I guess. You know, it's less than ideal. Or we first attack, grab the life, bring it back. Basically irrelevant. They'll gain the life too. So let's just push up Soren. No attacks. It's not great. Um, you know, shutting them down will be nice. Uh, but two land out from that. If we can get an, a land next turn, we have our Cruel Reality. Yarrick is out. I mean, they're just going to be paying life turn after turn, but... It's nice to get that curse out if they can't deal with it. They pay seven life. We get Soren back. And it's too bad we don't have more creatures in the graveyard, in all honesty. We're just going to toss the smash down on them. Um, the bad thing here, you know, they've got seven lifelink available to them, right? Uh, this is very bad. <laughs> and I guess Vona could also just exile it. Or um, destroy it. Which would be great. That's going to be another 7 life, though. And of course, they should be attacking with her before they do it. But I understand it's not their card, so probably not worthwhile. Nissa can mine us. Um, you know, basically bring anything out. Bubble Flip. I got you. That's my avatar. He hates crowds, just like me. Our opponent's laying the beatdown on us, though, and Yarrick the Desecrated is an absolute amazing commander because the ETBs are doubled up, right? So two lands into play, untapped. Flubble Flip comes in with those two lands. Uh, Cold Glick comes out, gets the fight. Um, double fight, in fact, because of the ETB, right? So dang nasty. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure we're going to come back from this. Um, you know, there are a few different wipes we have, and if we do top deck a land, we can kind of slow them down, right? Whew. So, Kogla is still a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, they can still pay life to sacrifice our permanents. Which is really, really bad for us. 
but uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think uh, they have one hundred percent grasp on it. They might clue in here, and be like, "Oh, that's such a good card. I need to deal with it." Right? Um, we're ready for like a crippling fear, something like this. Uh, a nice field wipe, clean everything up, and maybe we can restart the match, but things are looking a little aggressive. Um, they have lost that lifelink too, which is great. Uh, Nissa can't be activated, I don't think. Oh, Vona cannot... Uh, uh, Vona loses its abilities. Vona cannot take it. Oh my gosh. We get lucky, we get lucky. There's no death touch either, right? They lose the lifelink, they lose the death touch. They lose the mind fair ability, but they still keep our creature, which is a bummer. You'd think if they lost the ability, we'd get our creature back. Down to 12. Oh no. I mean, we have two vampires. <laughs> Is that enough? You know what I mean? Oh, it's not good. Uh, let's just minus two, I guess, or minus three, and we get to put one on our, our top of our grave, our library. Who do we want? We have a vampire that wipes the whole field. <laughs> the scavenger could be nice for life gain. Um... Creatures your opponent control get minus one, minus one. Do we have any vampires that do that? <laughs> I don't think we do. I think we just need the life gain. I think we just need the life gain, because we're so low on life. It's a hard call. I mean... We do want to be relatively quick with it, too. I don't think we have a vampire that does negatives to everybody. As much as I'd like that. That would be sick. We do have Crippling Fear though, right? So that's still um on the on the docket, hopefully. <laughs> it's not a vampire, unfortunately. And um Ethereal Absolution. Okay, so we have two things that we can get. Ethereal Absolution is gonna save us, Crippling Fear is gonna save us. But I mean this is looking pretty risky biscuits here. Spark Double loses its ability on ETB. Ancient Green Warden has no ETB ability. Thaya loses its ability. So, Overwhelming Splendor absolutely dominating them. However, we're still in uh, pretty terrible shape here, I think. No blocks. Down to nine. Let's plus up, and I guess kill the Planeswalker. Grab the life. Nighthawk Scavenger is out. We go up to three. We should gain this life as well. Let's try to kill Vivian. It's just a chump block. Maybe it's multiple blocks. Uh, of course, Thassa does not have Indestructible, so I'm okay killing that. I'd love to kill that Mind Flare. The 3 life is just good for us. In general. And they're sacking... Unless they uh, lose 5 life. Woohoo! The Curse of the Vampire. Gets the job done, right? Uh, Overwhelming Splendor is an aura curse. And of course, Cruel Reality is another aura curse. 
Not something I expected us uh, to do well with, but Overwhelming Splendor against a Yariok deck? That's absolutely deadly. That is so, so good. Going first, I mean, two land isn't great. Um, <laughs> we have Vanishing Burst, we have the Paladin, Blood Mage on three. It's not great, but, you know, we're just here to have fun. It's Brawl, who cares, right? There's no rank attached to it, so. We're here for a good time. Tezzeret. Uh-oh. So this means Ugin, right? Which is exile for our creatures, and that's very, very bad. We find that third land for the Blood Mage. Which is great. That's a cool vampire, I think. Nice value. I think we just minus drain it out. It's a, as good as it gets for turn three play. I mean, it's not a Vona, but they're both five drops. Um, I like Vona a little bit better, but it is what it is. Uh, Drain of the last Blood Chief, 4-4 four, four flying. Whenever it attacks, defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card from your graveyard. You return that card to the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, that creature is a vampire now in addition to its other types. We have an empty graveyard, but we're going to get there. Don't worry. The globe in play, they draw a card. The guardian idol is also a mana, so they have two available mana here still. Our fourth land out. Guess we don't really need the life gain. Wish we could throw that out. <laughs> Let's go Blood Mage. They have no graveyard. The pest is honestly... Probably fine. I do like the draw card, though. Hopefully it's our fifth land. It is. And then we will... Push up our Blood Chief. So we gain the most amount of life. There's nothing in the grave to bring back. And of course, we get the plus one, plus one counter. Because we lost life by drawing a card. Not too shabby, right? So that's kind of, it's nice to draw a card. And then because we lost life, we get the, the counter over here. So it's pretty good value. Um, the pest was my next uh, go-to to go a little bit wider, deal more damage. But then we have the blood in hand. And, um, you know, I definitely, definitely want to drop that next turn. Ooh, gaining life. They're so close. Hopefully there's no more ramp here. Hmm, that's actually okay. One mana left. Land out. We're gonna gain a bunch of life here. Or we can draw. We could also exile this. Let's exile that. That's going to open up the other attacking lanes for more damage. Dawn of Hope goes out. And then we plus. I do like all the lifelink. We already have 29 though. I mean, they will have to kill us, though. So if we gain just, like, so much life, they will have to 
still kill us. I want to split the, you know, spread the butter out on the toast, as I always say. Uh, not concentrate your value because then it's really easy to remove all that value at once. Whereas if you spread it out, you know, you need a field wipe, you need multiple pieces of single target. When it enters battlefield, look at the top four where they whiffed. That hurts. Reveal an artifact card from among them, put it into your hand. The rest in the bottom of your library in random order. Chaos wand in play. Uh oh. <laughs> that could be a problem. Um. Three damage to any target? Yes. So, Conquisidor in play. Plus to kill this thing. We have four mana. We don't draw a card. And we hit for 10, which is lethal. We could draw a card or we could play Soren. Um, and again, gain 10 extra life plus, um, I guess it would be 11. Uh, 11 life, 11 damage. Absolutely deadly. Our opponent goes first. Playing with the Protector. A 2-3 for 5. Other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one token creature. I'm going to keep 7. We have 2 land plus the heart. Pretty cool. Ethereal Absolution, which we were looking for before. Land out. Planes out. Cold Steel is a swamp. Uh-oh. That's not good. That's a very nice turn too. We have no removal. <laughs> not until turn 3. Uh, this is a black source like we talked about. The Breda Guard is really good against our Absolution. Holy Toledos. We're getting bullied here. We need a Crippling Fear. <laughs> um, Very bad. Let's grab the uh, Death Touch Life Gain. Whether it be the Nighthawk or the uh, Aether, Aether Dude. Um, Nighthawk's three mana. We can't play that. But we also can't play the other for two because we have no mana. Ouch. Okay, this is bad. And that's... Oh, no, we do have the third land through our heart. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? So we have the Nighthawk. That's fine. Not sure how we beat Basri, but I'm going to try my best. Ethereal Absolution was going to help us, but where's the land? You know what I mean? Pay three life to search for a land. Makes sense. Oh! Loxodon. Oh my gosh. Nice. We are going to get... So smashed next turn. This is incredible. Now is the time to if they have a land, you know what I mean? To play um, their dude, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be just too much. If this is a fifth land, They don't. They go with Hydra's Growth instead. Because the Indestructible um, from Basri. Trample. That's pretty crazy. No blocks. Down to nine. I think they had lethal that turn. They just chose not to take it. Then that turn, can they resist the Loxodon?
No, they cannot. Now is the time to strike. I think it's better to take the Loxodon, but at the end of the day, that Pride Malkin does us in dirty through the trample to everybody. I, I don't see us making us out of this. This is guaranteed lethal for them. Oh my god, we have to kill the Malkin. And, you know, it doesn't matter where this goes. It's just death. It's just death. It just stops two damage regardless. And the minus six, we go up to minus three. And that is still a very aggro deck. And they curved out so well. Going first and, and actually... Um, like, the best hand we've had so far with Arcane Signets and three lands. I mean, they are all planes, which is bad, but the Signet really does help that. They have to take the Signet, yeah. So now we're absolutely screwed. <laughs> I took that hand based on the Signet, and they thought seized it away. So deadly. Bolus, bolus, bolus. Why are you so mean, my friend? You're such a bully, bro. Ah, lethal in 22. <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, Definitely needing a swamp. That is the most aggressive thing. Turn one thought, that, like, scoop, right? Any sane person would have just scooped. I want to give it a chance, though, right? I believe that we can grab a land here. We do. We do, we do, we do. I want to save the oath. I hit a Planeswalker, I guess. And... Minus two? Let's grab a life. Beautiful. That's their fourth land. They probably wipe our whole field again. <laughs> Lord of Luxury. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards. Exile one of them face down, and then the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. You may look at and cast a card as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were any mana to cast that spell. And they actually take it from our library. My bad. Let's take out the Lord of Luxury here. Plus two on our opponent. And then we'll grab two life. We're at 33, which is fine. We need a second black source, please. We do have D-Spark open. Which is nice. I wonder what they grabbed. Does it have to be non-land? No, it can be a land. Personally, I might even... If I'm playing Bolas, might just take a land. But... I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Compulsive research. Sorcery speed. Target player draws three cards, then that player discards two cards, unless they discard a land card. And they do not discard a land card. We have uh, an expressive iteration, fateful push. Chimichanga. That's a great name. <laughs> You are becoming a chimichanga, dude. <laughs> Max been stuffing his face with Mexican food for weeks. <laughs> All right, not great. I think we just minus two. Another vampire back. It's too bad I can't bring that arcane signet back. That would be better. Hit for two, up to 35. Look at us go, right? We're getting down and dirty. Our opponent's at five available mana. 
our own crippling fear. They hit us with our own crippling fear. Holy Toledo's. Uh, you're gonna want to select vampire, friend. Yeti, nice. I always love seeing what people pick with crippling fear. It's a lot of fun for me. Okay, one mana in play. Another planes. This is ridiculous. What a mess I Hit for one. <laughs> Death by 25 blows. Oh my gosh. I mean, the tutor would be sick, the scavenger would be sick, and champion of the dusk would be sick, but no. At least we snag Bolo. Get out of here, man. Target opponent exiles top cards from their library until you exile a non land card. They get Doomblade. And they can cast that for free. Destroys our token. Could be worse. Wow. Look at us go. Right, just for two, I believe. Whoops. Take our martyr back, I guess. Well. I want that Grim Tutor out. And then that pushes up the Paladin. We're 37 life. We can afford it. And what do we want to take? Does the... um? Oh, gosh. So they could still activate Planeswalkers there. Maybe it's just cruel reality. I think it is. And then hopefully they can't deal with it. Oh my god. Why can't we just search for it? Right, why is there no text box? Cruel reality. There it is. No attacks. We lost life, so we get a plus one, plus one counter. I think that's our best bet. Hopefully they don't have anything to deal with it. I mean, we are one land away, but we have things to play if we don't get it anyways. Oh, good on them. Right back to our library. I like that, you know, that they're playing our own cards against us. That's a lot of fun always. Um, that happened to us in that other match too, right? The Mind Flayer. They probably have it too. They just haven't drawn it yet. So, we'll do our best. And the worst thing is we don't get to know what they what they grabbed either until they play it. This is nice. And we can take the two damage. That's fine. Ooh. Soren is really good. They don't have a vampire to sacrifice, right? It does have to be you may sacrifice a vampire. Yeah. Thief of Sanity, stop it! Okay. I really would have liked that Soren. I'm going to be honest. Okay. It's still a match somehow. We could minus two. 
we have six, seven, eight, nine. This would be ten, but it's at the beginning of our upkeep. That lifelink counter is a, a real problem for us. No, anything with double black is the only thing we're casting. Or four is probably not the best. We need the flyer out. We need something with flying. And this will force them to remove the twilight because, you know, as we get City's Blessing here, it stays, it doesn't leave. So they have to remove the Twilight Prophet, or we're going to be getting a, you know, a chunk of damage in. But of course, they've got Sorn with life gain now from us. Holy Toledo's! I mean, the two damage here is nice. And we kill Thief of Sanity because it's just an absolute bomb, right? No blocks. It's going to die anyways. So let's keep the attacker. Don't you dare. Don't you dare touch my prophet. <laughs> no. No! Let's try to recollect ourselves. It saved them. It absolutely saved them. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I think this is our best bet. But then they're just making vampires. Or they're just sacking with the plus one every turn. So that's not good. Unless we get a crippling fear. All right, Soren out. Minus four. Your blood is mine. Twilight Prophet back in play. No removal. Oh, I guess they could bolus minus it. They're one mana shy, though. We have lots of life. We can take the damage. It's not the problem, right? Just, like, leave me this Twilight Prophet, please. <laughs> Come on, man! Really should have blocked the Thief of Sanity, but at the same time, it's like... I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't think so. I think they've got something to deal two damage. Or three damage. Like, that was such a reckless attack that I think that they have something for it. You know what I mean?
Hmm. A sore encounter. They're just not used to it, I guess, right? That should have went out before combat. Okay, they take the draw. Okay. Dang it! So now Bolus Minus is on the Prophet. That's going to be game for them. We tried. We got as close as we could. We're going to show ourselves out here. I don't think there's any way out of this. At all. I just, uh, I don't see it. I do not see it at all. Scavenger out. Cold Steelheart out. I'm going to play this match to the end. I hate when people concede early and I'm winning and get a brawl game, right? Um, you know, that is to the point where I'm like, okay, let's let's pack it up here. This is this has gone on long enough, right? Um, but they could sack the Legion Lieutenant, kill the Scavenger, and then just bash in. Beautiful. They take our Heliod. Oh my gosh. It's literally been our our library beating us here. And that's all the life they need, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 14 damage. Um, I can't believe they didn't put life gain on everything, and then that would have put plus 1, plus 1 counters on everything as well. Oh, they need the white source to do that. They don't have the white source of mana. Well, I guess that's victory for us. <laughs> oh, man. I, I literally just wanted to give them the win. Because I know it's satisfying to actually beat your opponent, but they're too classy for it. They don't want to win. Uh, <laughs> they did, though. Let's be honest, right? That's hilarious. Get clowned, HGG. <laughs> Going first with good land. I'll allow it. We also have our Adanto Vanguard, which is really nice against removal. Bad news. We're playing against Niv-Mizzet's hand refilled. I mean, reborn. Such a crazy card for Brawl. Um, I think probably the best Brawl commander. Uh, a lot of people are like, well, what about Golos? It's like, well, you put Golos in your Niv-Mizzet deck. Easy. <laughs> right? So this is a very aggressive deck that we're really going to have to do our best to get around. Whenever you cast, uh, or you may cast it from your graveyard if you gain life this turn. Okay. So that's kind of irrelevant, but... So their creature type, obviously, is Dragon. Um, under Pillar of Origins, I'd assume. Yeah. Three mana in tapped. It is what it is. Let's hit for three. The Sanctum Seeker is a very good turn four. Obviously, this is a uh, dragon as well through the pillar. Getting that mana reduction, which is nice. Well, not really a reduction, but they can just spend their mana for it. We just go for it, though. No holds barred. They lose two life. We gain two life. They're going to trade with the Oath Sworn Vampire. No! We get an additional five in. So their creatures will be entering with plus one, plus one counters on it from the Metallic Mimic. They foretell two mana open. They've not played our turn. That's great. Let's go Soren. Attack with everybody first. 
They lose three life, we gain three life. We're hitting for eight. And we plus to the dome. Holy, they're down to three. We could have played the Signet first um, into Sorn. I thought about it, but then I was like, well, no, it doesn't matter because we're dropping uh, high tower anyways. Whew. Final thoughts. We could definitely include more field wipes, something like Kaya's Wrath, wiping the field, gaining life. I think that would be really cool. What card do you think could be included in the deck? Let me know in the comments below. We have always loved the, that discussion as a community. Thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out that link tree link and maybe become a Patreon. Join the Discord stuff like this. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you soon in the next.